Well, you guys would have laughed yourself sick if you had just been seeing me. I'm blathering away, talking on about the endowment and the divinization of the humankind for about 10, 15 minutes, and the camera tape had run out. <laughs> oh, this is rookie hour, I'm telling you. Anyway, on this endowment that I was, I was talking about, J. Gwyn Griffiths also contends that the idea of the endowment, that the motivation here is a heightened divinization, since divine identification were spiritually and physically potent. Showing that the divine was the Egyptian imitatio Dei. If these divine physical properties have thus been assumed in the human, it can confidently be inferred that it is meant to imply the divinization of a mortal man. The transformation of the human into the divine. Now this is beautiful Egyptian thought. This occurred identification with unification. We have this same amazing doctrine in John chapter 17 in Christ's great intercessory prayer. He's praying to the Father that him and the Father, he's thankful that they are one. He wants to make his disciples also into one with him and the Father. This is a unification, is it not? This is the divine. This is the principle here. The 1988 Uppsala Egyptology Conference of the 1990s article of Winfred Barta, he says, the background to understanding a potential breakthrough is possible with Joseph Smith's interpretations. He doesn't say that, I'm saying that. The important Egyptian background of studying their mythology and religion is what I believe we need to have a firmer footing on understanding Joseph Smith's interpretations. Barta first noted that the symbiotic relationship of the sun god and Osiris unifies them into functioning as a mother godhead. This is fascinating. A mutter gottheit. The books of the hereafter in the New Kingdom and on later times, here's what Barda says, they virtually make certain that this mother goddess function of Osiris. Osiris himself has a mother goddess function. This is fascinating. The two great mother goddesses of Egyptian religion is Isis and Mot. The two Joseph Smith identified as Pharaoh and Prince of Pharaoh. He also identified Abraham as Osiris here. Pharaoh is identified as Osiris in the Egyptian religion. Are you starting to get the feel here for this? This is important. This is what the critics and even the professional Egyptologists will not discuss in the Egyptian religion. They want it, it seems to me, that they want it to be a contradiction and a problem for the prophet. It's not. He says, uh, well, go to England. Go to England at the Uppsala Egyptian Conference. From the original unity, that is atom, A-T-U-M, and there are some Egyptologists who equate atom with Adam, the biblical Adam. From this original unity to ultimate creation, the beginning started with what is known as the Enead, the nine gods and goddesses, four pairs of male and female, only even they were androgynous, that is, they were neither male nor female. The principle here was the multiplying out of the original unity, which is the same exact idea in the Jewish Kabbalah, which according to the Kabbalists, go back to Adam, and certainly was known to Abraham. And Leonor Leet has shown this. Abraham is credited with writing the uh, Kabbalistic text of the Sefer Yetzirah. That's very fascinating. The embrace, 
the Egyptian idea of the embrace. I want to get to this also. I'll get to this here in a moment. I have to get a drink of water, otherwise I'm going to start cracking in my voice. Oh, the reason I wanted to show you this part of the uh, scenery here, these mountains up here, there's a beautiful mountain, or there's a beautiful mountain lake called Meadow Lake up here. I can't get to it right now because it's snowed in still. But I'm going to hike up into there, and I'll do some videos there this summer also. It is gorgeous up there as well. Isn't that amazing? I wonder if they realize they're being watched. Tons of steel flying through the air. You want a miracle? That's a miracle. Flying right overhead. Also creating clouds for me. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Technology is something else. Don't ever disbarrage technology if you can help it. It makes our lives a lot more wonderful, that's for sure. Just think what happens when we take the Lord seriously and accept His atonement and uh, accept this principle of becoming one with Him and becoming deified with Him. What will we be able to accomplish then, people? Get back to the ground instead of in the air. <laughs> this idea of the embrace as a fusion of the mortal and the immortal. The Egyptians had this concept. Barta showed that this principle of the embrace, the umarmum, which Horus gave the king, as well as his own father, on the horizon, as the basis of the feminine punning, punning wordplay of bringing into manifestation the mother godhead function of Osiris and of the other gods, Hugh Nibley has demonstrated that this embrace is nothing other than a fusing of identities, of mortal with immortal, of father with son, of mother with daughter. As such, it marked the high point of the whole mystery drama of the Egyptian religion. He further quotes Frankfurt that this embrace is no merely, merely friendly gesture of affection and brotherhood and all that, he says, no, this is a true fusion. This is a communion between two living spirits, unio mystica. Nibley further shows this embrace pictured from Lanzon's De Mitigesia on page 244, 248, 251. The brace is also of the hawk on the mummy of Osiris as well. It's pictured that way. Raymond Faulkner translates the coffin texts. The coffin spells 76 in the Egyptian materials. He says it translates as ascending to the sky, going aboard the bark of Ray, and becoming a living god. In spell 229, we read this, I am mocked. Wrongdoing is my detestation. You notice this? The king identifies himself with Mott. I hope you got that. 